welcome back to my channel Tasha here today I'm just gonna be telling you guys 10 things that you didn't know about me so if you want to know some things that you guys probably don't know about me and want to know about me then please keep watching oh by the way sorry my bed is like totally not made I've been like really lazy today so far but um we'll get to that anyway so number one I was a gymnast um, pretty much 15 years of my life, really highly competitive gymnast. I was a level 10 elite gymnast. Um, I started out at Gymnastics Plus in um, Lakewood, New Jersey, and then I switched over to Dublin Gymnastics in Wall, New Jersey. Um, I used to practice probably a good five days a week, four hours a day. Yeah, Monday through Friday. I'll I'll put some um, pictures of me being a gymnast um, in the video. So yeah, that was that. That was fun. And then after 15 years of doing that, um, I had really bad knees. They would like dislocate pretty much monthly. So I just made like the decision to just quit. And I switched to, once I went into high school, I tried out for our varsity cheerleading team. And it was actually a really good varsity cheerleading team. It was 10 guys, 10 girls. Everyone had to fly, everyone had to tumble. Um, we got fifth in the nation my first year, my freshman year, and we were um, on ESPN. So that was exciting. Those were literally the best days of my life. Like, I miss them so much. But yeah, so I switched to cheerleading. I mean, yeah, I switched to cheerleading from gymnastics when I was, when I was, actually I was 14, I'm sorry. I was 14 when I switched over to cheerleading because that was my freshman year of high school. And then I just did that till the end of high school. I was planning on cheerleading in college, but I just decided I didn't want to go away to college because I was like in my party phase and I thought if I would have went away to college, I would have just like, partied my days away and like failed school so I just decided to go to like a community college at first and then I switched over to Berkeley um, in Woodbridge which was like close enough for me to drive I just didn't want to stay anywhere overnight I would have just partied my life away it would have like not been worth it not that it's worth it now because I'm not doing anything with my degree anyway but anyway let's get back to the video okay so Number two, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I grew up in Jackson, New Jersey. Um, if you guys don't know where that is, it's where Six Flags Great Adventure is. I always put those two together because people are like, where is Jackson? Like nobody knows where Jackson is. And then I'm like, Six Flags Great Adventure. And everyone's like, oh yeah, I've been there. I know where that is. It's like literally like so annoying. But yeah, so I grew up in Jackson. I moved to Manalpin. I think I was 16 or 17. No, I think I was 17 because I had my license when I moved to Manalpin. I didn't want to switch high school, so I already had my license. I just drove and parked in the parking lot. Never got in trouble for it, but I thought I always was gonna. couple places since then I moved in with my boyfriend um, for a couple years and then we ended up moving up to New York so now I'm currently living in New York like 20 minutes outside New York City which is honestly good to be that close to the city I love being that close to the city I just hate being so far away from like all my friends and my family it's like a good hour 25 minutes between an hour and 25 minutes and an hour and 45 minutes drive which I do that drive weekly because I babysit my niece but that's besides the point so the next step in our life is to buy a house and we're still deciding where we want to live I can live anywhere as long as there's a Starbucks a Chipotle and a Target and that's pretty much everywhere in the entire world. So I think I'm good to move anywhere. I could live anywhere. Oh, one more thing I forgot to tell you guys. 
So my college degree was in fashion merchandising and marketing. I thought that I wanted to be like a buyer for like some kind of big company like Macy's or Nordstrom's or Victoria's Secret or like Saks Fifth Avenue because you get to like travel all around the world and like go to trade shows and pick out like what they um, have in their stores. So I just thought it would be like an amazing job and fulfilling and they make really good money. They make like over $200,000 a year. But what I didn't realize is that you have to start out making $11, $12 an hour and work your way up and I already have been out of college for 10 years now so it's hard for me to go backwards and make that like being that I've been a bartender the past 14 years of my life and I'm used to making over $200 a day so it's hard for me right now to pick a job that I want to do where I'm gonna make the money that I want to make but all right so number three if you guys don't know this about me some of you guys do some of you guys don't I did have an accident about six years ago I overdosed on multiple drugs I think like six drugs to be exact or like five but yeah so I overdosed um, I was in a coma for an entire month I had to learn how to eat walk and everything basically again like I was a child um, yeah that was a pretty traumatizing time in my life I also lost um, a good 50% of my hearing because I did have two strokes um, while I was in a coma for the month so I do have 50% of my hearing loss now I do wear hearing aids that bring me up to I think between 79 and 82% you can't even see them like you literally can't even see them they're behind my ears, but you can't see them. I'm like self-conscious about them. I know I shouldn't be, but I am. But yeah, so they bring me up to about 80%. So I'm still losing out on like 20% in like the hearing range or whatever. So if I'm in like a crowd of people and like someone's trying to talk to me, like sometimes I can't always hear what they're saying. But um, yeah, so it's been a struggle the past six years of my life, like dealing with not being able to hear 100% but I am grateful because there are people out there that have lost their hearing completely and hearing aids like don't work for them so they're working for me pretty well and I'm able to live like a productive life and not be on disability and stuff like that so that's good but yeah so I had to learn how to I had I, this is why I have like a little trach scar. I mean, I've seen other trach scars on people and they're way worse than mine. Mine healed pretty good. It doesn't really have, there's a little dent, but it's not. I've seen other people that have like a huge dent in their throat. Mine's just like a little one. So I guess I'm grateful for that too. But yeah, so I had to be on a feeding tube um, for a month and a half, I think it was. Even after I woke up from my coma, I was still on the feeding tube and I was on like dialysis and all that. I had like multiple um, organ failure. I think almost all the organs in my body like shut down. I literally was on the verge of dying. Um, I was on the brink of dying. So it's pretty crazy to think back that my life, that that happened to me. Because that doesn't happen to a lot of people. A lot of people that overdose, they don't survive. So I'm like really grateful for that. And I know I should probably take that platform and do something with it. But I'm just nervous. Like if I go to a school and like talk at a school about like my experience and what happened to me that I'm not going to be able to hear the questions that are coming at me and stuff like that. So I kind of just like stayed away from that. Even though that was something that I always wanted to do. I always thought it would help so many other people that are like dealing with drugs and being addicted to drugs. Actually, at the time that I overdosed, I wasn't addicted to any drugs. I was kind of just partying like a crazy animal and nothing was getting me messed up enough. So I was doing like multiple drugs at a time, cocaine, heroin, alcohol, Xanax, like and my body just couldn't handle it, so it literally just shut down, so that's that. Are we on number three or number four?
four. I forget. I think we're on number four. Okay, so I have this really big fear. Like, I know a lot of people like to go like scuba diving and snorkeling, but I can't stand when like those little fishies touch like my feet or my legs. So I just that's they're that's more scary to me than like seeing a spider or something like in your car while you're driving. Honestly, I just hate anything like touching me in the water. If I can't see the bottom of the water, I'm not going in. So it's so crazy because every time I go on vacation, my boyfriend always wants to go snorkeling. So the last time we did go snorkeling, but we went snorkeling, um, we took like a boat out to like a sandbar and the sandbar was literally like like this high like ankle deep like and that's it so you could see the bottom and there really wasn't that many fish so I did it then but I would never go in the middle of the ocean and go snorkeling or scuba diving first of all I don't want to get eaten by a shark and second of all I don't want to get eaten by an eel and third of all I don't want to get eaten by anything in the ocean at all so that yeah that's my fear I just I can't do it and I know everyone says it's so beautiful and the pictures like and what you see is so beautiful but I just I can't do it maybe one day I could get over my fear I mean I really want to try but it's just hard for me to try when I'm so deathly afraid of it okay another thing you guys probably don't know about me I do have a boyfriend we've been dating for five years he doesn't like social media at all so for all you guys who ask me why I never post pictures with him or whatever, he's just one of those types of people that doesn't really like to be on social media. So maybe one day he'll make an appearance. I'm hoping because I like social media. I like to post things on social media. I like to hear comments and feedback on things that I post. So it's really hard for me to be with someone who doesn't like social media at all, but I do have to respect it. And I know there's a lot of other people that are like this too. Um, people that I went to high school with, like guys that I'm friends with that I went to high school with. It's not just him. So I mean, whatever, teach your own. I just wish that I can like prank him on video and like make videos with him but yeah I could see that's probably not gonna happen unfortunately but yeah I do have a boyfriend we have been together for five years we do live together and hopefully you guys will see him one day soon um, hoping all right I think this is number six I'm not really sure I like totally lost track of time and numbers and what I'm talking about and everything so the next thing I'm going to talk about is just the fact that I do have some work done on my face. I do get um, my lips done and I get Botox every five months, every five or six months. I mean, depending on how deflated everything looks, I will go sooner. I usually just get my 11s done right here, the Botox, the top of my forehead. As you can see, there's absolutely no wrinkles, but the reason I get the Botox in my 11s is because it literally lifts my eyebrows like directly in the middle. And I just like how my face looks like a million times better with the Botox. I'll show you a before and after. I'll actually like link it in right now. It's literally insane, the difference. And I just get, I only get a half a syringe in my lips every six months. I did get a full syringe the first time that I went, but I didn't really have super small lips to begin with, so they really um, built up over time. So every time you get the Juvederm, like I get it every five or six months, every time you go back to get it, the old Juvederm is still going to be in your lips. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit deflated, but if you keep filling over on top, it's gonna just keep looking fuller and fuller. So this is about, I think I've been getting it now for two and a half years. So yeah, this is after two and a half years of getting filler every six months. And then my Botox, this was the first time that she really did the top of my forehead because I had wrinkles there. I can't show you now, but I could 
I'm gonna link the before and after picture. But yeah, so the cost for this procedure, I paid $550 for my initial um, one syringe of Juvederm lip injections, and then I paid $400 for my Botox. But every six months when I go, it's just an even $700 and that's it so I'll pay the even 700 every six months to keep my face looking like this because I honestly love how it looks and I don't want it to look any other way I'm not planning on getting any other work done on my face I like how my face looks now um, the only thing that I'm thinking about getting in the future when I save up some money is a Brazilian butt lift because they liposuction your fat out of your stomach and just like literally transfer it to your ass and I feel like that would be I would be like the number one candidate for this surgery because I have so much fat on my stomach and no fat on my ass and I want the fat to go from my stomach to my ass and it's, it's honestly probably the only way is for me to get a Brazilian butt lift. So yeah, when I have enough money, I'm definitely going to be getting that surgery. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully it will be in the next year, but I don't know because only time could tell when I'll have that money. I think it's like $7,500. Or, or I can go to, I think, um, Brazil and get it for like $2,500. But then how the fuck am I getting back home? I don't know I have no idea but I really do want that surgery one day hopefully soon we'll see fingers crossed all right and this is gonna be the last thing I'm gonna tell you guys hold on let me shut the bathroom door because you guys are literally staring at my toilet right now sorry about that yeah so this is gonna be the last thing I tell you guys um, about me so me and my boyfriend have been trying to get pregnant for about five years now and it just hasn't happened yet um, I did go get checked out. I don't have health insurance right now, so it's really depressing for me because my sister has a one-year-old, my brother just had a baby, and I wanted our children to like all kind of grow up together, and it doesn't seem like that's going to happen, so it sucks. I know like my face like seems like good and I'm not upset, but it I do cry about it often, I really do, because it just sucks. This is, some people can get pregnant so easily, and others, it's like a struggle, and I feel for those women that struggle with it too. I mean, I could have messed up my body when I overdosed on drugs six years ago. My boyfriend could have like low sperm, but we didn't really go to like a fertility specialist yet. We're planning to go like after we get married. But uh, for the time being, I did go to the doctor. I did get that procedure where they flush your tubes out to make sure your tubes are open, where they like push the iodine through it. Oh, I got that done. Um, they put me on metformin, like that diabetic medication to regulate your period. Even though my period is really regular, I get my period pretty much every the same day every month and I ovulate the same day every month because obviously I tested myself to make sure I do ovulate and I do so I don't know everything seems good on my end but I mean my eggs could be broken I have no idea I'm really hoping that's not the case and if we have to do like in vitro or IUI or I don't even really know all the things that you could do ICSIS I think there is and there's like so many options now so yeah, we have to start looking into that hopefully soon because I do want my kids to grow up with my brothers and sisters kids because I didn't have I had like one cousin growing up and that's it like a lot of my family still lives in Russia and I never even met them. But yeah, I just had one cousin growing up and that's it. So I really, really wanted my kids to have a whole bunch of cousins, which they do because I have my stepbrother has a child, my stepsister has three children, uh, my sister has a kid, she's trying for another one right now, and my brother has two kids. So yeah, if I have kids right now, they'll definitely have a lot of cousins, which is like exciting because I only had one growing up. And I just feel like cousins are like siblings. They you just you get close and then you grow up together and you're there for each other 
um, the boys are there for the girls and the girls are there for the boys and it's just like having a brother or a sister so I really 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 want my kids to grow up with my my siblings kids but we'll see what happens I'm hoping we can get this situation figured out by the time I'm 35 um, 32 right now so I got a good three years to go but I mean I'm trying to make this happen like like soon so we'll see what happens anyway I can't really think of anything else to tell you guys right now that you might not know about me but if I think of anything else I'll state them in more upcoming videos um, if you like this video please like comment and subscribe and I'll see you for more upcoming videos bye Thank you.